All right, what's up everyone? Professor Wolverine here. I'm Prison Mike! You know why they call me Prison Mike? Okay, would you please just, just calm down. Just sit down, calm down, please. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking to you about norm spaces. What they are, what they're good for. Well, it is a good for absolutely nothing. Okay, would you please just let me finish? And I'll also be talking about LP spaces, Binox spaces, Hilbert spaces, all that good stuff. Okay, so first of all, what is a norm? I choose to run toward my problems and not away from them. Because that's what, because that's what heroes do. No, not that kind of norm. Who let you people in here? Yeah, get the hell out. Okay, so intuitively, a norm vector space is a vector space where you have a method of measuring distance. Okay, so the most basic example is called Euclidean space. You know, the usual everyday way of measuring distance in R3. Now, a norm vector space is just a generalization of this. So let me tell you exactly what it is. Okay, so a norm space is a vector space V with a map from V to the non-negative real numbers such that if X is an element of your vector space and the norm of X is zero, this is equivalent to X being the zero vector. In addition, if alpha is a real number, then the norm of alpha times X is just the absolute value of alpha times the norm of X. And the third condition is the triangle inequality. It says that the norm of x plus y is less than or equal to the norm of x plus the norm of y. These are all things that hold in usual Euclidean space, in particular for the real numbers where the norm is just the absolute value. Okay, so one example of this is R3 with the usual Euclidean norm. If x, y, z is in R3, the norm of the triplet x, y, and z is just the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, you know, Pythagorean theorem. Now you can have both finite dimensional vector spaces and infinite dimensional vector spaces. Recall the vector space is infinite dimensional if there is no finite basis. Let me give you a whole class of examples called P norms, otherwise known as little LP spaces. I'm little LP. Please leave, just, just please leave, leave, leave. Okay, so what's little LP? So let P be a real number that's greater than or equal to one, but less than infinity. Obviously, otherwise it wouldn't be a real number. Now LP is the space of all infinite sequences so x1, x2, x3 goes on forever. Okay, so x1, x2, x3, etc. are called the components of the vector. And in this case, for little LP spaces, the components of the vector are just real numbers. With the norm given by the P norm, which is defined as so. Excuse me, don't you have to restrict to the subspace of vectors for which the P norm is finite? Yes, that's absolutely right. Okay, now you might ask what happens when you take P to infinity. Well, you get what's called an L infinity space. To infinity! and beyond! So, L infinity given by the same vector space, but this time the norm is given by a limit as P goes to infinity of the P norms. The limit does not exist. The limit does not exist! It exists. It's called the soup norm, in fact. So this is equal to the soup over the natural numbers of the absolute value of x to the n. Okay, so what you're doing is you're taking the absolute value of each component and you're taking the soup over all of them. You know that saying, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link? This is sort of the opposite of that. You only care about the biggest one. That's an important fact and you should probably prove it. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Okay, so here's another fun fact. When p equals two, you actually get a Hilbert space. Hilbert spaces are very important in quantum mechanics in particular. Hey, is that a graviton? Okay, so secretly, physicists don't actually know what a Hilbert space is. They think it's just an inner product space. When P is 1, this is called the taxicab metric. Why? Because this is the metric that taxi cabs care about. Maybe it should be called an Uber metric. Okay, another important fact is that LP spaces are what are called Banach spaces. A Banach space is just a complete norm space. A complete norm space is a norm space for which the norm is complete, which means that every Cauchy sequence converges. Okay, so given a norm space, a Cauchy sequence is defined as follows. So this is your norm on your vector space, and a Cauchy sequence is an infinite sequence, x1, x2, etc., going on forever, of vectors in V, such that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a natural number such that whenever m and n are greater than or equal to this natural number, the norm of xn minus xm is less than epsilon. Now, the norm space is said to be complete if whenever you have such a sequence, the limit as n goes to infinity of the x to the n's exists. All right? Then 
it's complete. A complete norm space, again, is a Banach space. Fun fact, Banach named Banach spaces after himself. Okay, so there's also something called an inner product space, which you have seen probably in linear algebra. And to every inner product space, you can associate a norm. So in particular, every inner product space is also a norm space. If the norm induced by the inner product is complete, it's what's called a Hilbert space. I am Hilbert, and this is my space. I mean, why is completeness important? I mean, is there anything good in the world that isn't complete? For example, your paycheck, you want that to be complete. Your haircut, you want that to be complete. The roof, you want that to be complete, don't you? Puberty, you want that to be complete. I think the only thing you don't want to be complete is a complete disaster. <laughs> hold, on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so let me tell you about some terms that you might hear in the context of LP spaces. Okay, so there are two very important inequalities in the context of LP spaces. One of them is called Holder's inequality, and the second one is called Minkowski's inequality. <clears throat> what is more important than quality? Equality. Michael. And no, just... I you have come a long way, baby. Holder's inequality is used to prove Minkowski's inequality. Okay, so this is Holder's inequality, and this is Minkowski's inequality. The main purpose of Holder's inequality is to prove Minkowski's inequality, or at least that's one of the main purposes. Of course, for Holder's inequality to hold, you need the 1 over p plus 1 over q is equal to 1. Now, if you look, Minkowski's inequality is really just the triangle inequality for little LP spaces. Now, why are they called little LP spaces? Well, there's also something called big LP spaces. That's what she said! <laughs> Big LP spaces are just essentially real valued functions together with this norm. It's a bit more complicated than that because if you take just Riemann integral functions for which this norm is finite, it's not actually complete, so it's not actually a Banach space. To get a complete space, you need to learn about Lebesgue integration, which you should learn in a higher level analysis course. Now, let me talk about why Big LP spaces are important. One of the main applications of Big LP spaces are to partial differential equations. PDEs, there's something called a Sobolev space. And a Sobolev space is just a subspace of LP spaces, and they're very important in solving differential equations, partial differential equations. You might not see this until you take a graduate level partial differential equations course, but really necessary to show existence of solutions to many different partial differential equations. Okay, let's wrap up now. Okay, so what do I hope you got from this lecture? May I borrow someone's textbook, please? Thank you. You cannot learn from books. Hope you know what a norm space is. Hope you know what a complete norm space, i.e. Banach space is. Hope you know a little bit about Holder's inequality and Minkowski's inequality. I'm Professor Wolverine. I hope you enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, share, comment. I reply to everyone. Hit the notification bell. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. I will answer you. I'm taking requests for videos. This was one request for a video. All right, I need to go home and eat, so have a great day, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear me. <laughs> yes, but I can hear you, unfortunately.